My grandma was a wonderful person. 14-year-old Isabel Manalo fondly remembers her grandmother, Marissa Malin. She loved life a lot, and she loved me and my sister and my brother and my cousin. Marissa's grandchildren had just celebrated their Abby's 73rd birthday. The most important thing that she loved to do is to be with her grandkids, and she would take them places. Places, including this Ferrell's, the old-fashioned ice cream parlor in Buena Park. Ah! Guys, guys, it's all my Ferrell's house! It was a busy April Friday evening, so Marissa and her grandchildren waited outside. Suddenly, things went horribly wrong. Breaking news in Buena Park, where a night out for ice cream has turned deadly. When an older driver pulled into a handicapped space facing the restaurant. The gentleman reached down to grab the disabled placard that was on the floor, and as he reached down, his foot hit the accelerator, causing the car to accelerate very rapidly. Rapidly plowing through a decorative steel fence and into the waiting crowd, killing Marissa, and critically injuring Isabel when the handicap sign pole fell on her head and fractured her skull. Her skull was crushed into like 20 different pieces. She could have died. That's how serious it was. You can go ahead and move those. Let's move those over. Mike Fleming, the CEO of Farrell's Ice Cream Parlors, is disturbed by the increase in storefront accidents, like these recent crashes through a Pacoima pizza place in August, a Laguna Hills pie restaurant in September, and a Canoga Park donut shop just last month. I need Fair Warning is a Los Angeles-based nonprofit investigative news organization which is focused on public health, safety, and environmental issues, and it's been digging into the issue. While no federal data is kept on storefront crashes, in a 12-month study, Fair Warning found nationally at least 16 people killed, 587 hurt, 121 seriously, in crashes into storefronts or adjacent properties. It only took a matter of days for Farrells to make their own decision, install 12 additional safety barriers, so an accident like this would never happen again. Victor Manalo is Marissa's son-in-law and a city council member in nearby Artesia who wants safety barriers made mandatory. As far as I know, this will be the first ordinance of its type in the United States. Manalo is introducing an Artesia City ordinance that would require new construction to install safety barriers in front of head-in parking areas that face a storefront. To protect their storefronts and to protect the people who are going into their stores. Both Fleming and Manalo say that possible opposition could be the cost to small business, but these 12 safety barriers were only about $500 each to install. Fleming calls it a small price to pay. In an area where it, it involves public safety, there is no compromise to me. It's my mission now for the rest of my life to make sure that this doesn't happen at any other business. As for Isabel and her family, they're now adjusting to what they call a new normal. I'm feeling great. My grandma was a big part of our lives, so we've had to adjust on many things, but we've gotten back to a regular working family.